Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm finally going to do my November wrap up. I'm sorry it's so late. I've just been really busy with the baby and everything. But um, November was a crazy reading month for me. I read I think a total of 31 books. Although five of them were picture books that I read to Emily, but still. That's awesome. So I'm going to tell you what I read in sections because I participated in a lot of readathons and Emily is having a chat with my mum if that's what you can hear. <laughs> so first we're going to go over my deck of TBR. Then we're going to go over what I read for Believeathon. Then we're going to go over what I read for the 1000 Doors readathon. And then we're going to go over what I read for the Clear Your Shit readathon. And then I think it's just like a small miscellaneous section. <laughs> so um, let's get started. So for my deck of TBR, I had 10 books that I had to read. And I'm sad to say that I read only nine of them. So that means I have to do my punishment, which is to unhaul a book from my shelves, which is honestly very easy because I'm going to be unhauling a book that I read this month. So I'll show you that in a second. But um, the first book that I picked for my deck of TBR was a TBR vet from 2017. So a book that I bought or received in 2017 that I haven't read yet. And for that, I picked out The Glass Town Game by Catherine M. Valenti. And this is actually the one that I didn't get around to. I have been really struggling to read books physically. I just don't have the time. I'm mainly getting through my books via audio and sometimes on my Kindle because I often lie um, in bed next to Emily while she's napping because she sometimes wakes herself up and I have to like be really quick and like put her down back in her mouth so she goes back to sleep. So I stay in the room and it's dark obviously so I read on my Kindle because it's, it has a light um, built in and obviously yeah I just don't have time to read books physically at the moment so I didn't get around to this one. Um, next was to read a sequel and I picked out Tilly and the Map of Stories by Anna James. This is the third book in the Pages & Co series. And I did read this. I absolutely adored it. This is my new favorite middle grade series. It's just so wholesome and wonderful. And it's just all about the love of books and stories. And I'm not going to go too much into detail with all these books because we've got so much to cover. So I have Goodreads reviews for everything that I read. You can check those out in the description. Um, so this is kind of going to be a speedier wrap up if that's all right. But yeah, this series is about a girl who discovers that she is part of a secret society of book wanderers, which means that she can travel into the stories of books. It's amazing, incredible, five stars. I loved it. Uh, next, we picked out of my Alcrate TBR jar, Mirage by Samaya Dowd. And this was amazing. It is an own voices Moroccan inspired sci-fi fantasy blend. And we follow our main character who is kidnapped and taught to become the princess's bodyguard because they are identical. And it was so good. Um, at first, I was a bit hesitant because it did take a while to get into the story. I found it to be quite slow, but as soon as a certain character was introduced, it was so good. This also has a heavy focus on colonization and sort of having your culture erased. So it had a lot of important themes, but it was so good. I can't wait to read the next book. So I gave this a 4.5 stars. Then I had to read my most recently acquired book and I read The Girl and the Ghost by Hannah Alcaf. Oh, I forgot to mention whether I read these via audio or not. This I read via audio but flipped through the illustrations. Mirage I read as a Kindle book. I got the Kindle version as well. And this I listened to the audiobook. It's an own voices Malaysian inspired middle grade. And it's about this girl who has a ghostly companion. And they seem to be best friends at the start but it's really kind of a toxic uh, friendship. And this was a lot darker than I was expecting. Um, it has sort of like body horror and gore and it's quite scary and creepy towards the end but I really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. Then I picked out of my ARC TBR jar The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. I actually DNF'd this book. I can't remember how far into it I was. I think it was like 23% or something. It was just boring. It didn't hook me at all 
and I just didn't have time to waste on books that I wasn't enjoying, so I just DNF'd it. Then I picked out of my Alcrete TBR jar, I picked out The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is now one of my favorite books of the year. I listened to this on audio, which was amazing. Oh, this was everything. <laughs> I need a sequel or a spin-off or something. I just, oh, it was so beautiful and I loved the historical elements because I love a good historical book and it was just magical and wonderful oh, I just I, <laughs> and it destroyed me so yeah I gave this five stars new favorite then I had a non-fiction and I read Hunger by Roxane Gay again I listened to this on audiobook as well and this is actually gifted to me from Witty Novels and this is all about Roxanne's uh, relationship with her body. When she was young she was actually gang raped by her boyfriend and his friends and because of this Roxanne started to gain weight to sort of hide her body from others because of that trauma. This was incredible, so many harsh truths. Definitely check the trigger warnings, I always leave the trigger warnings in my reviews so you can check that out because it did have uh, quite a bit of triggering content I feel like for a lot of people. I did give it a 4 out of 5 stars though because I do feel the writing was quite simple and a little bit repetitive um, when I, I wish it was more flowery and I don't know it was just simple I don't know how to describe it not that simple is a bad thing but I don't know I was just expecting something a little bit different I guess okay my next prompt was to read a classic and I read Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lind Lindgren I can never say that last name um I couldn't find an audiobook for this anywhere and then I found a teacher reading it to her class on YouTube which was awesome so I technically listened to it and I mean this was fun it was fine I gave it a 3.5 it's about this um, orphaned girl who lives by herself and she's just getting into all sorts of shenanigans it doesn't really read like a novel it, it's more episodic where each chapter is kind of its own storyline if that makes sense like this would be a great TV show it probably already is a TV show but I don't know yeah it was fun I'll definitely um, keep this and I'll probably read it to Emily when she's older. But yeah, it wasn't my favourite classic I've ever read. Okay, the ninth prompt was to read a book with a pretty cover. And I listened to the audiobook for The Time of Free Magic by Hilary Mackay. This is one of my favourite covers of all time, but unfortunately the book itself was kind of bland. It follows this family and they move to this really old ivy covered house where weird magical things start to happen and I don't know I was just expecting something different again I just wanted it to be more magical and whimsical and it just kind of wasn't so yeah I gave this like a three out of five stars it was all right and the last prompt was to read a trashy YA and for this I buddy read a book with my friend Kayla from Literature Reads and we read Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. I had never read this growing up and I figured, hey, it's about time. And it was terrible. Oh my gosh, it was so bad, so bad. So I gave this a two stars. That's probably being a little bit generous, but it's basically about this fallen angel and he is absolutely creepy and disgusting. Like if a guy acted that way towards me, no thank you there was also a fat side character and i didn't really like that representation how that was done it just wasn't good it just wasn't good there was a twist at the end that i didn't see coming but like still no it was it's a no for me so this is the book that i'm going to be unhauling for my punishment which is really not a punishment at all because i am happy to say goodbye okay so those are my deck of TBR books. Now moving on to Believeathon. So the first challenge was to read a mystery, and for this I listened to Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. This was it was pretty good. It's a obviously a middle grade mystery. It's set in the 1930s, and I feel like the mystery element was pretty good, pretty well done, but I really had to suspend my disbelief a lot because just the way that the characters reacted to certain things just didn't make sense to me. Like they should be terrified that people are being murdered 
at their school but instead they're like oh my god this is so fun solving this murder mystery it's like <sighs> i don't understand so yeah i gave that like a 3.5 uh the next challenge was to read an author from a different culture than you and for this i read kiki's delivery service and this was absolutely amazing i'm definitely going to have to get a copy for my shelves because i borrowed it out from the library this is one of the few books that i read physically this month i had like a headlamp and i was using that to read in the dark but it is what the movie is the studio ghibli movie is based on but the book is a little bit different um at the start it's very similar but as the plot goes on the plot is quite different i feel like they um created a more dramatic ending for the movie whereas the book is more of a like quiet just happy story it was amazing i absolutely loved the illustrations as well and i ended up giving that a five stars i absolutely loved it Okay, the next challenge was to read an audiobook, and for this I listened to The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell, and if you have the chance to listen to this audiobook, I highly recommend it. It's narrated by David Tennant, and it is fantastic, although it does have a lot of like illustrations and physical elements to the story, so it is worth um, having a flick through as well, but I loved this. This is another five star read set in the British Isles before they were called the British Isles and we follow a wizard boy and a warrior girl who are grown up as enemies but they have to come together to fight a greater evil and it is just hilarious and wonderful. <laughs> it was just everything. I loved it so much. Next was to read a supernatural book and for that I listened to the sequel called Twice Magic. It wasn't as good as the first book but it was still incredible and I gave it four stars. The next prompt was to read a book set in another world and for this I read The Dragonette Prophecy which is the first book in the Wings of Fire series and I'm obsessed. Like I have to read the rest of these books. It's set in a world, um, all of the characters are dragons and there's this ancient prophecy where these five dragonettes which are like baby dragons um, are going to save the world and we follow those five dragons. It was just it was so good. I ended up giving it a 4.5 stars. It, it didn't quite reach the 5 but it was so close. It was just a really fun ride and I can't wait to continue on with that series. It was so good. Then the next prompt was to read a book featuring ghosts. So of course I read The Girl and the Ghost by Hannah Alcaf. The next prompt was to read a book with a dangerous setting and for this I read The Glim by Emily Rodder and illustrated by Mark McBride. I listened to this on audio but I flipped through the illustrations and this was pretty good for like a standalone fantasy middle grade. I felt like it was pretty well thought out, fleshed out. Um, the story was really interesting. We follow this boy who slips between the world and ends up in the Glim, which is currently at war with dragons. And it's a very, very dangerous place to be. I thought it was really good. It wasn't like amazing or anything, but I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I ended up giving that a four stars. The next prompt was to read a book by a new to you author. And for this, I read Pippi Longstocking. The next prompt was to read a book that features a prominent villain. And for this, I read the third book in the Wizards of Once series called Knock Three Times. And I loved this again. But again, I feel like the first book has been the strongest so far. So I did give it a four out of five stars, but I cannot wait to read the fourth and final book because we finally will find out who the narrator is. We don't know who the narrator is and I really want to know. So yeah, I have that on my Kindle. I'm going to be reading that hopefully soon. The next prompt was to read a book with a beautiful cover. So of course I read The Time of Green Magic. The next prompt was to read a book with a colourful cast of characters and I listened to Starfell, Willow Moss and the Lost Day by Dominique Valente and this was all right. I feel like this was a super average middle grade for me. It was a bit I feel like younger than I thought it would be and it had a very sort of generic plot. It's about this girl witch who is not as powerful as her siblings and she has this like cat gremlin creature that's like her best friend who's really really grumpy all the time um, and her ability is to find lost things and last Tuesday the day has gone missing no one can remember what happened and so she has to find the lost Tuesday. Yeah, I feel like it was alright. 
it was alright. <laughs> I gave it three stars. Not my fave. Then I had to read a book that incorporates folk tales, so I read Tilly and the Map of Stories. And then the last challenge was to read a 2020 release, and for this I listened to the audiobook of A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. This is the sequel to A Pinch of Magic, and again we're following the three Wittishan sisters, is that even how you say it? I don't know. But oh my gosh, this is amazing. I liked this even more than the first book. I gave this one a five stars. It has more like piratey, like lost treasure vibes. It was awesome. I absolutely loved it. And I can't wait for the third book that's coming out early next year. Okay, moving on to the 1000 Doors readathon. So this was an awesome readathon and I have um, vlogs for it so you can check those out. But I'll explain as we go on. So first you had to choose one of the hosts videos as a starting point um, and I chose Emma's um, from drinking by your shelves starting point and the prompt was five and you could interpret that however you wanted I interpreted that as a five star prediction so I read Tilly in the map of stories for that and I was right it got five stars then at the end of that video it was like what did you rate this book and then you clicked on the number what you rated it and it took you to the next prompt so that's kind of how it worked so the next prompt was a meme um, and it was the I'm back meme and I sort of interpreted that as a sequel so I read Across the Green Grass Fields by Shana Maguire this is the next book in the Wayward Children series that's coming out in January I got an e arc of it from NetGalley and I really enjoyed it I ended up giving it a four stars um, it's set in this place called the Hooflands where basically lots of hoofed creatures live like centaurs, unicorns, that type of thing and yeah, I really enjoyed it, but I do feel like the ending was kind of unsatisfying, but it was fun. I gave it a four out of five stars. Then the next prompt I got was to read something that feels like Marvel. And for that, I read a fantasy book because Marvel is like a fantasy universe. And I read The Time of Green Magic. So we filled that prompt. And then the last prompt was Spirit. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect because I want to read The Girl and the Ghost. Ghost? Spirit? Hello? So that turned out amazing and I ended up finishing the readathon in like five days or something ridiculous. That was an awesome readathon. I really hope they do more rounds. Okay, so the next readathon is the Clear Your Shit readathon, which is a two month long readathon, so it's going until the end of December. But there are 26 prompts and I managed to do. I think 21 of them in November, so I'm super proud of myself. The first challenge was to read your shortest book, and for this, I just read a ton of picture books to Emily. One of them I can't find, I don't know where I put it. It's called I've Loved You Since Forever, and it is a beautiful little board book with beautiful illustrations, with a lovely sort of rhyming rhythm. I super loved it gave it five stars. I also read her That's Not My Polar Bear. I absolutely love this series of books. They're a touch and feel series and they're just super super cute. I love these books. I definitely want to get more for Amelie um, but yeah I gave this five stars. <laughs> I feel weird reading kids books but whatever. Then I read three picture books that were actually sent to me for review. So first we have Ways to Say I Love You by Marilyn Singer and Alette Strathoff. This is stunning. It's based on, I believe, a poem, and it just has these beautiful watercolor illustrations. It was just stunning. Five stars. Then we have The Lost Library by Jess McGeechan. Oh, someone told me how to pronounce this, but I can't remember. I'm sorry. This is a gorgeous little picture book about this boy who founds a book that he has to return to the lost library but he doesn't know where it is so he enlists the help of his friend and they go on a little adventure to the lost library it's gorgeous five stars <laughs> and then we have dog by sean tan this one isn't really for kids it's quite um dark and it's mainly filled with illustrations and it's absolutely gorgeous um it's all about the beautiful bond between dogs and humans this was stunning five stars obviously <laughs> 
So those were the picture books I read to Emily. I don't know if you care, but there you go. Okay, the next prompt I fulfilled was to read a book about a group of people or found family. And for this, I read Across the Green Glass Fields. Next was to read a book with an animal in it. I read Pippi Longstocking. Then I had to read a book that's been intimidating you. And for this, I started listening to The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien and I actually DNF'd it. I think like 36% of the way in or something like that. Oh my gosh, it was just so boring. And I'm really upset about it because I really loved the first book. I just could not get through this second book even with the audiobook. So super sad that I had to DNF that. The next prompt was to read a scary book and I read None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. This was sent to me by Alan and Unwin and I loved this. It's a mystery, murder mystery thriller. It's set in the 80s all about uh, this serial killer they're trying to catch and yeah it's about this girl who was previously a victim of another serial killer but she escaped and got away and then the FBI recruits her and this other guy um, to interview uh, juvenile uh, serial killers because they're not responding well to the adults but if they send in other teenagers they might talk and get some answers for some cold cases and stuff like that but they end up visiting this really really creepy serial killer guy and he kind of knows what's going on on the outside with a serial killer that's on the loose right now so things are connecting and they're trying to catch this serial killer it was so good i gave it 4.5 stars ellie marnie knows how to write a mystery thriller it was so good next was the first mini boss battle and i can't remember what prompt i chose but i ended up reading mirage for this prompt i really can't remember what the prompt is i'm sorry if i can find it i'll put it on the screen but yeah i've already talked about that then there was a free book space so you could read whatever you wanted so i put the wizards of once in there next was to read a fantasy book so i put uh starfell in there all right the next prompt i fulfilled was to read a book with the prettiest cover and for that again time of green magic Emily is screaming for some reason. All right, next was to read a magical book and I put The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue for that. Then read a book that has the color blue or has water themes and I put The Queen's Rising. Next was read a book with a character you think you'll want to fight. And for this, I read Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey, which is the third book in the, I think it's called The Hot and Hammered um, series. It's a romance series. I loved the first book, Fix Her Up, but I hated the second book, I can't remember what it's called. And the reason I put it for this prompt is because I was honestly expecting to hate the love interest based on his appearances in the previous two books, but I actually loved this book. I gave it 4.5 stars, the same rating as the first book. It was just so wholesome and romantic and I love when romance books like feature a child. It was just, I loved it. I loved it. All right, next was read a book someone recommended to you or bought for you. And Whitney obviously bought me Hunger. Then read a book you don't remember the synopsis for. And for that, I read A, spr a Sprinkle of Sorcery because I had no idea what this was about going into it. Then we have another free book space. So I put Twice Magic for that. Then read a book with a map in it. Tilly and the Map of Stories. And it also does have a map in it. Then read a library reservation. We had Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, read a book with a shiny cover or a magical object in it. The Girl and the Ghost had a magical object in it. Then we had another free book choice and I just put knock three times. So, sorry if that was kind of tedious to get through. But yeah, I've got five prompts left. Well, as of now, actually, I have less than that, but we're doing great with that readathon. Okay, now moving on to the four miscellaneous random books that don't fit into any of the categories that I previously talked about. So first we have Evie and the Animals by Matt Haig. This is a middle grade book and Matt Haig is one of my favorite authors of all time. So I had a hold on the audiobook from my library and it finally came in and it was so wholesome. It's about this girl who has this ability to speak to animals, but this gets her into trouble more often than not. And it was just great. It was just great. I gave it four stars. 
Then I listened to The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. This was sent to me by Alan, Alan and Unwin as well. And this was good. I gave it 3.5 stars. It's like a fun, like supernatural romp throughout London set in the 80s, but it lacked a lot of depth for me. And I think that's where the book really fell short, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I did enjoy the ride, but yeah, not my favorite. Then I read Swimming Lessons by Lily Reinhardt. I don't, I, I don't know why I read this because I'm not a fan of poetry, especially modern poetry, but I just was curious. <laughs> so I got it out from my library and it was as I expected. It was okay. I am probably going to get slapped for this, but I honestly feel like anyone could have written this. <laughs> like it's just simple sentences broken up by hitting the return button. Like I just don't, I don't get it. Some of them did have some powerful lines though. So I did give it a three out of five stars. And lastly, I read Halsey's um, poetry collection called I Would Leave Me If I Could. And this is definitely the best poetry collection I've ever read. It's way different to other modern poetry collections I've read like Milk and Honey and that because these poems were so complex and just the way they were structured, um, there was just so much thought behind them and they were so powerful. Yeah, this is how you write poetry in my humble opinion. <laughs> but yeah, I gave it a four out of five stars because again, poetry is not my favorite thing, but it is definitely my favorite that I've read. Oh, so those are all the books that I read in November. I know there is a heck ton of them. I'm sorry if this video was really long or boring, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys really soon in a new video. Goodbye. Bye.